Hey everyone, thank you for tuning into my TIG welding how-to series, TIG welding for beginners. Today, I'm gonna to give a demo on how to do a TIG welding lap joint. All right, I'm gonna fire up the machine here. My gas is already on. So for the sake of what we're doing today, we're gonna to be welding 1 8 plate. So we're gonna dial this back quite a bit. You could probably drop it down to about 180 amps. Uh, again, we're welding on AC current. So here's our plate that we're gonna use here. This is 1 8 plate. It's been cut into pieces that are three inches by six inches long. It's a pretty good size to start with. So a good way to tack these guys together it gets them nice and flat actually. You can set up a couple plates like this. And then what we're gonna do is put a tack there and a tack there. That way we have a good flat joint. We'll flip it over, we're gonna tack the other side so that way you get two joints that you can weld out of one. And then as you keep practicing, what you can do is you just keep adding plates like so, so that you get multiple weld joints that you can practice and flip it over and you have equal and on on the other side. Okay, so my machine is running. The first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna ball my tungsten. So what I mean by this is right now we just have a straight taper on the end of my tungsten. So we need to put a ball on the end of the tungsten. The reason that we do this is because it will handle the high frequency of the alternating current a little better than it would with just a standard point like this. And the way that we switch the polarity, we ball the end of the tungsten by flipping our polarity to DC positive. So using a piece of scrap, you can ball the end of your tungsten. And you're just gonna wanna press the pedal down a tiny bit. It won't take much. And that's about it. One very important thing to remember before we start welding is flip your polarity back to AC. Don't forget this part. Okay, so I'm going to throw a clamp on this and we're going to do our tack welds now. So just a little bit of fill, not too much. Like I said, we're going to flip it over and do the other side as well. So one very important part before we get rocking and rolling here, you gotta make sure that you've cleaned this off. I have already gone over this with a lacquer rag, so a lacquer thinner type material. So I've gotten any, I've gotten rid of any type of grease or any kinds of crap like that. Other thing I'll do is we want to get any oxide off of the joint. So a steel wire brush is pretty much perfect for that. I usually always wire brush with my weld, never across it. When you're wire brushing across your joint. You're not actually pushing any debris or any of the crap out of the joint. That's what you want to do. So just a quick job, nothing too crazy. But what we've done by doing that is remove any kind of oxide from the cut that I made with the table saw or whatever saw you use. Quick blow of the compressor or anything like that and you're ready to rock. Okay, so here we go. I'm only gonna weld about halfway so we can have a look at how it's going. But what we're basically gonna be doing, I'm gonna aim a little bit high. Reason being is we don't wanna push too much fill to the bottom edge, because that's the way gravity is gonna wanna pull it. So we're gonna wanna aim a little bit high. So kinda just aiming along this edge here. I'm going to be putting my fill in roughly 90 degrees to my tungsten. So if my tungsten's straight, my fill is gonna be about opposite to that by 90 degrees. Like that, or like that, and so on. So again, we're only gonna go halfway here.
Okay, so I would call that weld pretty good. It turned out all right. So as you can see, we bit away a little bit of this edge here. I'd say about a third of the puddle rode up high here, which is good. And about two thirds of it was down below. And that's good there. Now, if we're looking at our weld down this way, I'd be pretty happy with this guy here. Reason being is it pretty much is the same width the whole way down. So we don't have any edges that are too wide, too low. We don't have any area of the weld that's skinnier than the other. The whole thing is pretty uniform like this. That's what you're looking for. So what you wanna be looking for, I'm usually looking at the bottom edge of the weld as a sign of how it went. So the bottom edge of the weld here, as we can see, is pretty straight. You can see a couple little areas where it might have ducked in and out a little bit, but for the most part, looking at it, you've got a pretty straight wetted edge, and that's what you want. Nice and straight here. Our puddles are pretty round. Anytime you're going too fast or too hot, your puddles will not be round like this. They'll be very sharp, kind of like that, really drawn out. So you want nice round puddles. You want a nice straight edge along the bottom here and about an even amount that you've removed out of the top edge. So, let's finish her up here. What you're gonna watch for when you get to the end is this is gonna be screaming hot. So what you're gonna wanna do when you get to about the last inch or so here, you're gonna wanna add a little bit more filler rod and you're gonna wanna back off the heat. See how much I backed off the heat at the end? So that's how we finished up right there. So overall, the whole thing was about the same width the whole way, it's pretty good. We don't have any areas of the weld that really jumped out or sagged out the bottom. We don't have any other areas of the weld that ducked in because they were too cold. That's a pretty good weld. I'm pretty stoked on that one. As you can see near the end here, I'd say the last three or four dabs, it got a little bit too hot. I probably should have backed off the heat a little bit more, but hey, uh, nobody's perfect. <laughs> One good way to tell how much fill you have, if you have too much or not enough, is if you take a ruler or a combo square of any kind, and you can see how this thing's sitting pretty flat, that's good. If you have too much fill, your top edge is gonna be raised up a little bit, and this guy's gonna sit up like that. So you'll have a gap in between here. Obviously this is exaggerated, but in some regard, too much fill will raise this line a little bit, so that's an easy way to tell. All right, so one thing I did want to show is two very common and typical mistakes with the lap weld. So this guy here is a good example of one thing that you'll probably see more of than the other. And this is basically an exaggerated version of what it looks like when your weld is either A, too hot, or B, does not have enough filler rod. So ways you can tell if you, uh, your weld has either of these problems Let's take a look at our top edge here. So if you threw a ruler across it, like I talked about, yeah, it looks all right, because your, your weld is not raised up, so that's good. However, you see this sharp edge on top here? This sharp line should not be there. Basically, what that is, is that's the parent material that you've cut into, and you've replaced it with fill, which is good. However, what's happened is there's not been enough fill there, so either not enough fill, or the weld is too hot straight up. What happened is that an inadequate fill or excessive heat basically will cause this ridge on top here. So on the bottom, you can see we have a really smooth wetted weld, almost a little too smooth where it's spilled out quite far. If you have a weld that's too hot, you're gonna see we have a very small amount of weld on top here and the majority of it is out at the bottom edge there simply because of gravity. So if your weld looks like this, where you have that sharp edge on top and it's almost overly wetted in on the bottom because it's quite low, your problem is either A, you're welding too hot, or B, you don't have enough filler rod. 
Here's another problem that uh, is pretty common with lap welds. Basically, what happens, this is an example of a weld that is either too cold or has had too much filler rod put into it. So the reason that we can tell this is look at our bottom edge here. Our bottom edge has all this crazy stuff going on at the bottom. It's in and out, in and out. This weld is a pretty good example of something else that is pretty typical with lap welds basically to the point where you've had too much fill put into it. So when you have too much fill put into a weld, it will not allow it to wed out properly to the bottom like you want. With a happy and proper lap weld, you'll see again, like we saw earlier, our bottom edge is quite straight, but with this dude here, it's not straight at all. So that's a good way to tell if your weld is either too cold or you have too much fill in it. One reason we can tell that there's definitely too much fill in this weld is here's the ruler trick. We've thrown a ruler across it, and you can see the gap right here. The gap gets a little bigger here, so that means there's too much fill in this guy. Another little sneaky way that you can see that your weld has not wetted good enough on the bottom edge. So we're gonna take a look at this weld here first. We're gonna look at our arc burn. Some people call this arc burn. Uh, I've heard a couple of, gas burn is another name I've heard it being called. I don't really know officially what it's called, but basically so your arc burn or your gas burn should be pretty close to being equal on either side. If we look at this guy here, you can see it is somewhat equal, but again, we have a pretty erratic edge going on here. It's in and out. It's in and out, and then on the bottom especially, we have all this crusty stuff in here. Basically, this crusty edge on the bottom here is a good indicator that your weld was either too cold or had too much fill in it, and that the weld was not able to wed to one of the edges. And we can tell this is the edge here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a good one to start with. The reason this one's a good one to start with as your first weld you can practice is that you have very little chance of burning through to the other side, obviously within reason. If you burn through, don't blame it on me. <laughs> so again, if you give this a whirl and you watch this video and you learn from this, please tag me in your work. Uh, send it to me on Instagram. I'm at Pacific Arc TIG Welding. I'd love to see how you guys do with it. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, Leave it in the comments section below in this video. I'll check them out. And if you guys give me some suggestions on what you'd like to see, I'll make more videos. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, share, do all that stuff. I feel bad asking, but the more people that check out these videos, the more videos I'll make. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Have fun welding.